How's it going everyone? Welcome to the vlog number nine. As usual, we'll be playing 2-5 Friday night. Hopefully we get book a win because it's been a really bad week. Uh, we're down every day so far and we play Monday to Friday, so that means we're down four sessions in a row. Thankfully, they were pretty, they weren't that big of losses, just like total, a little over a thousand. So just a thousand in four sessions is not that bad at all. And um, I hope you can hear me. I got a $400 promotion, so all together it's $600 for the week. So we could definitely make that back today. That's a really thing I like about these casinos. A lot of promotions. I'm up already like $1,300 this month in just promotion. So it's really nice to have that kind of consistency since I make a living off of poker alone. Um, that's how I make the vlogs. I want another source. So yeah, anyways, we're right here walking into the poker room. Let's get into it. 2-5 is full in the moment, so we're going to have to play a few hands of 1-3, so we buy in for $300 with 2 extra in case we have to add on. Let's jump right into the first hands. First hand, then we got Queen Jack off in the low jack. I make it $12 and get the button and big blind to call, so three ways to a flop. Flop comes ace, nine, eight, so we got a gut shot to the nuts that is something, and I think the button and big blind could be very wide, so I could get a decent amount of folds. So I make it $18 and get the button to call. Big blind fold, so heads up to a turn. Turn is a seven, so brings in jack 10 for a straight. And I just had to check here since I think I'm gonna be checking a lot with my aces as well. And he called next to act, so seems pretty strong. So yeah, that's what I do, and he checks back. So let's hit a river. River is a deuce, and this is a good spot to bluff. I think he's bending his aces on the flop, and I definitely could have some myself since the turn was a scare card, so I could be paw controlling with maybe the weaker aces. So with all that in mind, and that he just seems distracted watching TV, I think if he had a strong hand, he'd be more focused on the game. He just has $55 behind, so let's do it. I go all in for $55 and get the good news when he pretty quickly folds and we take up down the first pot. Now we're in the button with 9-7 suited, hijack and cut off limb, so I make it $18 and get the big blind and cut off the call, so three ways to a flop. Flop comes queen 4-3, it's next to us, and I just got a backdoor flush draw, three ways, I'd like to have a little bit more than that to be turning my hand into a bluff, so I just decide to check, basically giving up, let's see a turn. Turn is another four, and once again they check to me, and they just gave me the feeling like the previous hand, that they're just done with the hand, they were just not paying attention on the phone, one guy was looking at the TV, so I usually wouldn't be bluffing this spot since I'm saying that I have a four, um, if I bet here, since the queen would bet on the flop, over pairs would bet on the flop, maybe I'd bet here pocket pairs between the four and the queen, going for some thin value, but um, yeah, usually I just wouldn't be bluffing here since I think I'd be just called pretty lightly since my line doesn't make too much sense. But with these players, the way they're acting, let's do it. I make it $20. And once again, they both pretty quickly fold. So, so far, very easy table. They're just pretty much showing what they have. And uh, we take it down. After that, we hear our name for the 2-5 must move. So we rack up, book a little profit of $70, but very happy with it since I didn't hit any hand. It was all just bluffs and a very short session. Just played a few hands. So yeah. Let's move right into the bigger game and into the first hand. Getting started with premiums, pocket queens in the button, under the limps, cutoff makes it 15, we're three betting, I make it 50, and only the cutoff call, so heads up to a flop. Flop is ace, jack, three, so not ideal, one overcard to a pocket pair. When he checks to us, I think I'm just always C betting this flop after three betting pre flop, ace high board, just way better for us. And if I make it small, I still could give value from worse hands, at least on the flop, jacks, worse pocket pairs. So with that in mind, I make it 35, and he check raises us to 75, that's almost a min raise. And this player, he's a pretty tight player play often with him i don't see him get out of line i don't see him check raise that often usually when he's aggressive he just has it so yeah um definitely a good price but with the player i just let him have it i could be calling with aces that'll have a lot here and uh, he takes it down now we're in a small blind with king queen off and a button same players before makes it 20 dollars if you notice a little bigger than his previous raise and yeah, I mean, looking back at this, I should just three bet. I just, he is a tighter player, so I usually don't three bet him that light unless I'm really going for value and the suited version 100%. And again, I should probably just do it since he is the button, so he's tight, but he'll have a wider range anyways, just having to get through the blinds. But in this spot, I do call and the big blind calls as well. So three ways to a flop. Flop is pretty good. King, six, three. So we have top pair, queen kicker, checks at the button. He see bets for $30. And yeah, I think just calling here, what's make the most sense. I call, big line folds, heads up to a turn. Turn is a five, I check, and now he slows down and checks back. River is a four, so now the backdoor flush gets there. A two is a straight, a seven is a straight. 
But um, in the moment, I didn't put him on the flush since I think he would be barreling that on the turn if he got it. And I didn't think he had too many sevens or pocket twos. I think most likely he has a king himself. And on that turn, that was kind of scary. Just decided to pot control. So I want to get value from those kings. But I really don't like this spot the way I played it because I think I make it way too big. I made it $75 and I'm going super thin for value here. So since the straight goes comes in, there's a four liner and a flush comes in. So if I want to get value from a king, I got to make it tiny. I think I should bet 30 on the same that he did. And if he does raise his fold, but at the moment I make it $75 again, not a fan at all of if I got to go thin, I got to make it small. But um, yeah, that's what I do. And he pretty quickly calls and I show and he flips over pocket twos for the bottom end of the straight. So yeah, wasn't putting him on that. I thought he probably would check that on the flop, but it works out for him and he takes it down. I feel like I just got punished for not playing aggressively pre-flop. But um, anyways, on to the next. Now there's a straddle going on when I look down at Jack-8 suited in the cutoff. I make it 30 and get the button and under the gun straddler to call. So three ways to a flop. Flop comes ace-king-3. So we got a backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. And it's a board that's way better for us since the button and under the gun straddler probably have a decently wide range. So I see bet for $35 and only the button calls. So heads up to a turn. Turn is a 10, and now we have a gut shot, so a little improvement, but still, it's not like we would have hit a flush draw, and he called next to act. I'd be a little more open to try to take continuation this bluff if the big line would have called instead of the button, since, um, yeah, the button feels a little stronger, and he could have aces that I'm not going to get to fold. So I just hit the check. I could still have the river that I could try to bluff if he checks back. So that's what I do, and it seems like he's going to bet himself, but finally he does check as well, so let's see the river. River is a four, and yeah, I don't think I'm ever winning here with Jack High. And the fact that he kind of thought about betting but checked the turn kind of made me feel like maybe he was thinking about bluffing himself. And I definitely could have some aces here that play this way. So we haven't been able to win so far having value. So let's try to bluff again. I make it 85 and get the good news when it pretty quickly folds and we take it down. Moving on to the next hand, where there's a button straddle, and we look down at 7 8 suited in the low jack. I make it 35 and only the button call. So heads up to a flop. Hopefully we can hit the flop this time so we don't need the bluff. Nope. Flop comes 4-4 four, four, deuce. So, you know, two other cards, backdoor straight jaw. <laughs> Not much really. But this player just lost a huge pot with aces against kings. It just looks like he's steaming. So I think he's calling with absolutely everything pre-flop. So of course he could have pocket four, he could have fours. But he could have anything else as well. So more likely than not, he just has nothing here and we could take it down. So I see that for $35 and he calls. Turn is great. It's a king. Well, you know, not great for our actual hand, but great for our range. It's a very scary card. Maybe he had a two, or I think he may be just calling with ace high, or just almost everything. Just like pre-flop, I think he's in position, and he's just hoping I'll check the turn and maybe bluff me off of it. That was my thought in the moment. So this just feels like a great card to bluff on. So I keep it going. I make it $60, and once again, the bluff works since he folds, feeling good. Getting bluffs through back to back to back. Now we're in a big blind with ace nine suited, under gun and under gun two limp, small blind calls. We raise it up to $35 and get under gun and under gun two to call. So three ways to a flop. Flop comes ace king jack, so top pair, nine kicker. Um, I wouldn't hate to check here with my kicker that's not the best out of position against two players, but I think betting is fine too, and that's what I do. I make it $35 and get under gun to fold, but under gun two does call, and he's the same player from the previous hand. Turn's not the best. It's a king. So now losing, of course, against kings and chopping against all of the worst aces. Uh, so yeah, not my favorite turn. I decided to slow down and check. And now he bet $60. So yeah, not loving his spot. But again, this player has just been going pretty crazy after losing that big pot. He's playing every single hand. So I don't think I'd fold yet. I think he could just be betting himself an ace that we're chopping with. Or maybe he called with a queen or a 10 that he has a gut shot and now he's trying to bluff it. So yeah, for that price, I just can't find a fold against this player. I called, let's hear River. River is an eight and I check and I bet it's $125. And yeah, not liking his spot. But the thing is, he's just giving us such a good price. If my math is right, we got to be good less than a quarter of the time. And this is very player dependent. He's been playing almost every hand. I think a good amount of time I'm just chopping against an ace. Or he's just being going crazy with a missed gut shot, a queen or a 10. So with all that in mind, I just feel like it's a profitable call. So I do do it and see the bad news when he flips over queen 10 off for a flop straight. Ace is not good. He takes it down. There's a struggle going on now. We're looking at a premium in the button. Queen 9 off. 
There's so much going on with this one. You could hit a straight, you could hit a flush, you could hit trips, you could hit quads, full house. So with all this potential, of course, we're going to raise it. We make it $30 and get small blind, big blind, and under the gun to call. So four ways to a flop. Flop is pretty good. Queen, seven, ten. So top pair, nine kicker, back door, straight draw. It's next to us. And with top pair, I'm going to bet, but I want to get called by worse. So I don't want to make it too big. I make it $55 and doesn't seem like anybody really has anything since they all fold and we take it down. Okay, let's play a real premium. Pocket aces in the button. There's a straddle going on. Lojack makes it 35. He's a pretty good reg. I three bet him to 105. Fold back to him and he calls. So heads up to a flop. Flop comes five, nine, four. So definitely an interesting board. Not the best for a range of part, of course, that we have pocket pairs, but we're not going to be hitting it too much. And we don't have the ace of spades. So when he texts to us, with all that in mind, I'm going to bet on a bigger size. I make it $100. He pretty quickly folds and we take it down. Straddle is still going on. We looked on an ace eight suited in the hijack. I make it $30 and only the undergun straddler calls very action player. So heads up to a flop. Flop comes five, queen, nine. So when he texts to us, we don't have much going on. Not that many back doors, just one over card on a very wet board. So I don't think I'm going to get that many folds. And my ace may be good here a decent amount of time. So I check back. Turn is a deuce. And once again, it goes check, check. River is a 10. He checks. And after checking twice, I don't think I'm going to get too many folds if I bet here. So I check as well. He flips over ace. So I flip over an ace. And he flips over a three. So our eight plays, we take it down. Another 2-5 open, so we are no longer must move. And we look down at pocket fives and under the gun two. There's struggle going on and under the gun one min raises a $20 that made my situation pretty awkward. I mean, straight up, I should just fold um, three betting fields over playing pocket fives. Um, but this player was, this table was very action and I feel like set mining here, I could easily get it all in with plenty of these players that they just had top pair and they weren't being too aggressive pre-flop. So I felt like if I call here, I'd be able to see the flop a good amount of time, except for the small blind. He was a reg. So definitely he would be squeezing here a good amount of time. So I'm just hoping if he didn't show up with a hand, I will be able to see a flop for the $20. So I do put in the call. Cutoff calls, button calls, that are the two action players on this table. And now, of course, the wreck in the small blind takes the spot. Three bets to $135. Under the gun, one folds, and it's on to us. Now I'm in a pretty awkward spot, and I'm definitely annoyed with myself for not being strict with my preflop ranges. I should just be folding here, and I usually do. And I do think just running bad is kind of affecting my game a little bit here, not being as strict as I usually am. But here we are with pocket fives, and in the moment, once I'm here, I think a call is good because I just got a call $110 to play an over $500 pot because I'm pretty sure the cutoff and button are always calling here to this super action. They want to see flops. They want to see big pots. And if I hit a set with these two guys and they hit top pair or something, I could definitely make enough money to make the $110 profitable. So $115 profitable. So with all that in mind, I do put in the call. And as expected, the cutoff and button calls as well. So four ways to a flop. Flop comes queen, six, four. So set mining in this huge pot does not work. But the small blind checks onto us. And yeah, with our pocket pair, I'm not betting on this flop with two people left to talk. So I check and the cutoff and button check as well. So let's see the turn. Turn is a four, giving us some hopes. Since now we have a gut shot, four extra outs. And the small blind once again checks. And yeah, uh, I, I still wasn't a fan of betting here. It just sets a big pot, so much action and shown some strength preflop. I think people could just be playing safe and be checking maybe some pocket pairs that are better than mine or middle pair. So yeah, still felt a little too thin to be betting here with my pocket fours, even though they definitely need protection. So I do check and the cutoff and button once again check. River is a seven, small blind checks. I'm happy to get the showdown. I check as well. And now the cutoff, it's $300. That makes absolutely no sense. And he's just a recreational super action. I think the thought process is everyone check down to the river. They have nothing. So I'm going to bet big here and get them to fold. Not considering that his line doesn't make much sense. But in folds, I'm ready to call. But the small blind puts in a call. That felt super annoying. I... I was so happy. I felt so certain I was beating the cutoff. But now the small blind calling, uh, um, I tanked for a while. And yeah, um, even though the small blind checked down, 
I don't think we're beating a hand that's calling in this spot. So I do end up folding. Small blind flips over, pocket jacks, and cut off pretty quickly mocks. So yeah, pretty sure cut off just had absolutely nothing and a small blind takes it down. I'm trying to focus and be strict as I usually am and just have more of a three bet fold range pre-flop unless I made a button or a big blind. For our next hand, we're in the big blind and we see pocket kings. Under the limps, hijack makes it 20, small blind calls. We're going to three bet this. I make it 100 and I'm very surprised when only under the gun calls that was the pre-flop limper. So definitely very interesting. Let's see a flop. Flop is beautiful, 3-5 deuce, and we have the king of diamonds that makes me feel a little better. And under the gun, I just felt he is so capped. He's a pretty tight player, and he does limp 3-bet sometimes. And I, my thought was that he was planning on doing it in this spot, but since I 3-bet, well, I looked really strong, and he decided just to call. So in a moment, I just thought he had or ace-king or queens or jacks. I don't think he'd be doing this with 10s because aces, I think he'd be four betting us. So yeah, with this in mind, I decide to check and we see the good news when he bets $150 back onto us. And I'm just going to fast play this. I don't want any scare cards to come on the turn at ace if we hit our set ourselves. Can I think now he just has queens or jacks. I think maybe he'd be doing this with ace king if he had the diamonds, but we have the king of diamonds, so that's not possible. So yeah, we're going to fast play this. I make it $450. He thinks for a little bit and does end up calling. Let's see a turn. Turn is the six of diamonds and I just feel so good that I have the king of diamonds since I don't think he has any flushes the way this hand was played. And he just has 400 behind. So we go all in. He takes for a little bit and does call. Let's see a river. River's pretty safe. Another six. I show and we are good when he mucks. Yeah, I'm pretty certain this was queens, maybe jacks, but the way played, I don't see what other hand he could have. And yeah, we take down this pot. And with that, we have a $1,900 stack. So we're in for 14. So things are going good, up $500. Let's try to keep it going. Now we're in the low jack with king 10 suited. I make it 15 and everybody calls. Hijack, cutoff, button, small blind, and big blind. So yeah, no respect. Six ways to a flop. Flop comes deuce, four, four. So we have two of the cards and a flush draw. It's next to us and six ways. Yeah, uh, I don't have many fours and someone perfectly fine could have it, especially the blinds. So I don't want to bet here and get raised and now have to be calling big bets, trying to hit my draw on a paired board. So I do decide to check and it checks around. Turn is beautiful and nine of diamonds. So we hit our flush and as well, there shouldn't be too many combos of full houses since I don't think anybody's calling with nine four or four two maybe the big blind if it's suited but i don't think so much so if someone has a full house it just has to be pocket twos or pocket nine so feeling pretty good about my flush text again to us and now i want to get some value i make it 50 dollars and get the hijack and butt in the call so three ways to a river river is a seven i bet 175 dollars hijack folds and now the button raises us to 400 and what the heck is this um it looks so strong but i mean again just He's trying to represent a full house, and that is just sets a small amount of hands. The river came a seven, but I don't even know if he's calling with pocket sevens after the hijack calls me on the turn. So maybe he has pocket sevens, but well, everything else that's left is pocket nines and pocket deuces. So yeah, uh, I just can't fold. It's just 225 more for this size of a pot. And this player is fairly aggressive. So I wouldn't be too surprised if maybe he just has an ace of diamonds and is turning it into a bluff. And yeah, uh, he checked the flop. It just doesn't make too much sense to me. And I can't fold for this price. I call and he flips over pocket fours for flop quads. So yeah, he, he didn't have a full house. I was, uh, <laughs> I guess I was right about that. And uh, he takes it down. So what comes easy goes easy. We're back breaking even. After that, the straddle is going on almost the whole time. So it's 2 5 10. And I just lose some pots back to back to back. I call with 10 9 suited from the blinds and I lose it. I raise myself with queen 10 suited to 50. And it goes multi way and I have to fold. And the same thing with king queen suited. So all that together, we're down and under $140. After that, we go card dead for a good amount of time. And now I'm done with the session. I'm just playing until I get to the blinds. My wreck is ready. I'm in under the gun. I'm basically ready to go home. When I look down at pocket king, so okay. 
Um, this is always kind of a scary spot when you're about to leave. You have the rack ready to go and you hit a premium hand. But of course, we're not folding. I'm going to get $35 and only the button straddle calls. So heads up to a flop. Flop comes 6, 4, 3. So definitely not the best for our undergun range. So with that in mind, I decided to check as well because the button, he is a super aggressive action player. So I do think if I check here and I look weak, he's just going to attack me with almost every hand he has. And indeed he does. He bids $55 and I see the merit in raising here since there's some draws. But against this player, I think he just has so many bluffs and I don't want those just to fold if I raise. So I do just call. Turn is amazing. Another three. So now there's way less hands that we're losing against. So it's less combos of sets. And if you had top two, we're beating that as well. I checked him and he keeps on going. He makes it $125. And uh, for the same reasons as before, I don't think I should be raising here. And I don't think he has too many threes. I think maybe those would be paw controlling. But I mean, in case the slight chance he has a three, but I don't think he has it that often. I think it's mostly bluffs and I don't want those to fold to a raise. So I call once again. River's pretty bad. It's an ace and not because I think think he may have one that it could be but mostly because i think that's going to kill the action i don't think he's going to be trying to triple barrel bluff too often on that river and that's exactly what happens when i check he checks back i show and we are good we were planning on leaving but after that hand we we're feeling pretty good so we we're like okay a few more now we're in a small blend with pocket tens undergun one makes it 60 dollars. that is very big he is a player that has different sizes depending on depending on the strength of his hand and he does bet big when he has a strong hand so i'm just taking this as a three bet the low check calls onto us and once again i'd be three betting here a lot but against that size i'm taking it as a three bet and i guess i get four bet with pocket tens but i decide to call that yeah not not the best spot i should probably just be heading home <laughs> like i was planning on doing but that's what i do big blind folds we go three ways to a flop flock them six six nine I check and under the one now continuation bets for $115. Low jack calls and it's on to us. And uh, um, yeah, I put him on a really strong range. And here he is. Continuation betting against both of us. And um, yeah, uh, the low jack, he was a previous player from before. Super action, very aggressive. So I definitely think I'm beating him. He could have 6-2, so it doesn't have to be either. But I think he's calling as well with 9. So with the fact that I think I could be beating the low jack, I do put a call. And as you see, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty exhausted here since I put the wrong size. I just put $60 and they tell me that it's actually 115 So yeah, <laughs> we should be going home. But anyways, I put the 115 Let's see a turn. Turn is a deuce. I check and now under one checks as well. So feeling good. But the low jack bitch $300 and it's on to us. And I'm really hating this spot. And it's a couple of reasons because under the gun one, I still think he could have over pairs better than ours that it's just paw controlling now since two people called and maybe one of us has a six. So now he's scared about that and he's just going into check call mode and the low jack. Uh, he's super aggressive action, but is he betting a nine here? Or is he just betting a six because he made it a big size? So here I'm in the middle in a very annoying spot. Um, I, truthfully, I don't know what to do since I think I could be losing against both of them or I could be both in, beating both of them. Maybe under the one, this has ace king and Lojag is overplaying his pair of nine and we're beating both of them. But yeah, in the moment, the fact that it's my last hand, am I really going to just lose a huge pot before going home when I was planning on leaving. Like I shouldn't be playing this hand in the first place. I do just find a fold and feel my heart sink a little bit when under the one folds as well, flipping over ace king and little low jack shows a nine. So yeah, uh, pretty sure we were good here. Super frustrating hand altogether since I shouldn't have been playing it in the first place if I would have just done what I was planning on doing and leaving on the turn I don't know anyways not a fan of this hand it was definitely pretty frustrating and let's call it a session let's head out and see how we did Let's head into the car to see how we did. 
so we were not able to break even for the week since we had the fifth loss in a row so every day this week um i feel pretty good truthfully for running bad um just losing so many times in a row i feel like i got better with this as a poker player it definitely would be affect me a lot more um before it helps that last week i ran a lot better um and my losses were a lot smaller than the wins i had last week so we're still doing okay for the month um and yeah very interesting session um the flush against the quads i just you know i don't think i could fold there it's just a stupid good price and it's a pretty it's a pretty aggressive player so i just got to be good such a small amount of time there maybe if you went all in um and then at the end the pocket tens that was a pretty frustrating situation as well and the pocket threes that i definitely pre-flop didn't play that proper um it was just a really weird dynamic interesting dynamic going on the table that i felt like i was over and over again spots that i know i should three bet a fold um but my hand i felt was too strong to fold but if i three bet it was always against the good player um and i prefer to not just go heads up against him that he'll let make less mis less mistakes and i just prefer to go multi-way against all these a lot more action recreational players and so i don't know um it may not be the proper way of playing i just felt like it was the best in the moment um i don't be results oriented i just didn't really hit any of the times and so it did end up um working against me for this session that doesn't mean that it's the wrong play so yeah um all together pretty good um at least we got some cool content you know always fun to see someone flopping quads i mean a little less fun when it's against you but that helps the fact that i'm vlogging um when i have a like a like a hand like that that i just lose it's kind of like okay at least i got a good video for the vlog it really it really makes it feel better um so yeah that's about it i don't want to rant too much i'm tired you're gonna head home it's like 12 30 um it was a great game but yeah i i'm just tired and i don't um i rather just book the mini loss the breaking even and just head home i gotta edit tomorrow this video and have it ready we're not doing sundays anymore we're moving it to wednesdays to see how that does uh but just want to say thank you guys so much for watching if you could help out and support this channel by subscribing liking and commenting on this video you know if you have any opinions about how i played since i definitely played some spots pretty interestingly <laughs> you could say um, so yeah, thank you guys again and I'll see you next week.